people do to like me because I am not completely like them. I do want to learn different. <laughs> I am not completely like other people. What do you mean by that? People dislike me because I am not completely like them. And in what way are you different? <laughs>
All right, you should hear me now. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> Dude, let me know in the chat if that changed anything. <clears throat> All right. Bruh, dude. <laughs> we uh, we messed with these settings last time, so they're all misconjumbled, but we're good now. We should be good now. Let me know if you can hear the desktop audio. Let me know if you can hear my mic, and then let me know if you hear phasing or anything weird in the tracks. Everything should be fixed. Let's run it. Desktop's gone. <laughs> test, test, one, two. We should be good with everything. Keep letting me know. Thank you. Fuck all the ass. Let's go. Ain't no stopping us. go man that's a lot of energy right there man that's how we get it done good job yuck coming in hot for the first track clarity no vocals there are some sections that are too loud unfortunately they're blowing my eardrums but we can let that pass because a lot of the hard work is like getting brewed up here right lots of good flow lots of good energy lots of good feeling this is a good piece of art here now we need to refine the piece of art so it has more energy in the first drop so it's a little bit less loud in the second drop a little bit more refined on the mix and master there and then kind of examines the four to the floor switches that are going on because these come in at not the perfect time <laughs> So 
So like this is a four to the floor switch. Now, usually if you've referenced any tracks, they'll usually do these four to the floor. They'll like throw in four to the floor into a halftime song, maybe in the fake out or maybe in like the second drop. So like the whole drop is four to the floor. But if people are dancing halftime, you know, to the head bang, and then you just switch them to four to the floor randomly in the middle of the drop and then bring them back to halftime, it's a very abrupt switch in timing. And that's why it's done in specific phrases like the fake out or a whole different drop uh you could technically make it work in the middle of your drop but it just it's not working here so re-examine it make sure that you can keep the energy as constant as possible throughout your drop it's really important also the vibes i'm getting like the color based vibes the ace aura vibes it just feels so good it reminds me of lost lands when i was watching ace aura and this this fake out like the color based fake out basically. It is literally rising so much energy and tension, and you're expecting a super impactful high energy drop, you know, similar to like how Ace Aura does it. If you need to reference how he does his drop, so you can see what I'm talking about. But when we hit the drop, it's just very stale energy. The energy should be more intense than what we just felt here. <laughs> One of the main reasons is just not really a call and response pattern. You kind of just throw us into a fast response base here. So go dun, 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 dun. So the melody just gets repetitive very quickly off the rip because it's not structured and like proper phrasing flow. So just check on those things. Make a make it more danceable. Add higher energy with the call and response in a four bar phrase. Use a call that lasts all the way up to the first snare, the first point three. Response all the way to the last point three of the phrase, which is the last bar, 4.3. And then boom, at five, it just loops back. Boom, boom, boom. Then you're starting making your drop. And I promise you, this is how you're gonna increase energy. I'm pretty sure you did something similar here. Let's check it. <laughs> No, not really. Yeah, so same issue here. Just response space, just playing. It gets repetitive. To be honest, when I was listening to it, though, I wasn't really listening to anything else except how loud it was. I was just turning down my interface because it's it's literally damaging my ears. It's that loud. So just be careful. When you're measuring the loudness, it shouldn't be getting past negative three luffs. Murad is at negative three luffs. He's kind of pioneered a new genre that's taking the loudness wars to the next level and that's the tear out genre and he's kind of set that limit at negative three lefts i don't know if you've referenced any of his songs but you guys should reference the lefts so you can make sure you're not getting too loud man like rhythm negative five negative four around there tear out negative three you know house negative six negative five it just it's all around different loudnesses you gotta get down with to get down. Okay. All right. Good job, though. You know what I'm saying? Clarity it hits hits heart. It hits home. It hits my heart. I like it. That's yuck. Clarity, no vocals. And polar bear in space. Very nice. We have Azul, who actually re-uploaded his in a correct link. We'll do his later. We have Espen up next with, You've got the teeth of the Hydra upon you. Work in progress, version dos. Let's run it up, man. Don't worry,
All right, there we go. We got Espen with You've Got the Teeth of the Hydra upon you version 2. Work in progress, you know, naturally. So this is pretty sick, man. I think you submitted this last time. The vocals, sick. Obviously the flows, we got nice vibes. But the overall mix sounds pretty muffled. Like the sub... The 808 is so much louder than everything. Now, we're not saying to bring the 808 down. Definitely not. But you need to get everything up in the mix. Like the vocals, louder and more clear. There needs to be more clarity. They need to be popping out almost as loud as that 808. And it should feel like they're sitting on top of it rather than getting like squashed from it. With distorted vocals like that, it becomes difficult to bring it up in the mix and reduce mud and stuff. So just make sure when you're getting it loud, you're using tricks like parallel processing and bussing techniques to achieve a cleaner sound and have more control over your distortion. The snares in this buildup is too loud also. It's kind of overpowering everything. Uh, in the actual drop the same thing's going on like the uh, main star of the show should be the basses and the bass leads but those are quieter than some of the tops the hi-hats the rides specifically so if you listen it kind of sounds like muffled they're almost squashed if you're just sending all of your signals or all your groups straight to the master at one time it'll easily start to get crowded and very hard for all your frequencies to have space and dynamics so you have to remember you should be bussing signals to different buses and uh, like utilizing audio engineer techniques in ableton to like use cheat codes basically so you can make your sounds clean that's what i do in my tracks if you look at my template you can see what i'm talking about i have it for free in one of my videos about making a template so use your buses if you need to, but when you're making super loud music like this, you have to compensate because usually we're turning down thing, turning things down to have headroom in other genres, and then we're using compression to pull things up. Well, because we can't like go past zero. So just remember that when you're thinking of your mix. So too much compression, be careful. Don't have it feel squashed in the mix. You want to make all these sounds clear and loud and impactful because that's going to add like three times more energy than what it has now. Right now it's starting to sound uh, like almost muffled or contained in like a little bubble. A little frequency bubble. So, yep, that's just taking it to the next level. You know, obviously you got flow, you got a good drop, you got cool vibe, nice piece of art here. But we have to get that mix sounding super clean so that it can be presentable to the public like a like a young prince getting a, a brand new horse and everyone is watching all right up next we got vlad with crazy like a folks that's crazy like a folks okay okay then let's get it done crazy like a fox vlad run it Crazy hot dog, crazy hot dog, crazy hot dog. 
crazy. That's crazy like a fox. That was pretty cool, man. So, some of the sounds, the, like the main bass lead, for example, sounds like there's like the reverb is overpowering it. Usually what you would do is parallel process it, have one dry, and then the wet together, playing at the same time. You might be doing that, and if you are doing that, good, but just turn down your wet chain so that there's so the reverb isn't louder than the actual dry version. If you're not doing this, then make sure you are parallel processing because that's what will make it sound a lot cleaner. And the noise too. So like the reverb and the white noise is almost like... So the white noise needs to be EQ turned down a little bit so it can be like subtle in the back. You can even pan it, you know? It shouldn't be like in the middle. And then your main bass lead should also be treated the same. Stereo with a mono version. And then for the reverb, we gotta make sure that you're not just slapping on the reverb so it's super wet. We need that dry, loud signal and that loud, wet signal combined to get the super clean. Folks. Super close, man. Very nice, cool piece of art here. This reminds me of all the, uh, you know, wonky, wubby, wookie shit that you'd be listening to, like in Denver at Red Rocks, getting down some of the trees. And you're just like, if you guys don't know of the trees, go listen to the trees and you'll see what I'm saying. Like everyone's just, you know doing all kinds of fun things to make this music sound even crazier Folks. so this is this is actually really good and if if you can make this super clean in the drop it'll just be ready to go Folks. and then if you can get that perfect mix you know what i'm saying you know the white noise the reverb control then you should make a lot of different songs like this and people would go and see your music because this is it's fun and these vibes very emotional so important it's crazy so like overall piece of art man beautiful piece of art good job vlad impressive once again ha naturally vlad crazy like a fox I'm going to go ahead and download these last songs real quick so we can get them done for the get done, if you know what I'm saying. And then we'll go ahead and get on to the next one. Next one's going to be Wake Me. Wake Me by the one and only Nemesis. It's a free download, as you see in the title as well. It's Wake Me, parentheses, free download, parentheses, out. This is parental advisory. Lock your kids in a different room right now, guys. Just for a little bit and during this part of the live stream. I'm sorry. It is Nemesis's request. We're going to get it done for the get done. Let's go get done.
Yes. Hon har sett det buffonery. Oh my lord, how Jesus mercy. Okej, okay, vi gör en rundown här för en gång. Hold up. Wait a minute. Damn, dude. How you do this to me with all these frequencies, man? Damn. <sighs> Good job, Nemesis. I can see you're improving. Let me talk about the things that make this so gosh dang sounding professional, cool, awesome dynamics, right? So this is obviously almost a brick of noise, but it's, it's organized distorted noise that's a little bit too loud we're at 0.7 you know what i'm saying it's a little bit too loud so it should turn down a little bit but lord have mercy don't you want to turn it up like you just want to turn it up you want to feel that energy it's just like intense but most importantly once you hit with this wall of distorted sound we have this stroke of silence this dynamic shift which just there's so much let's check it out Turn it down a little bit so you don't blow out the ears. And then the... Just, it's beautiful. These fills, these calls, these dynamic shifts are so important. And I'm really happy to see that you're utilizing them. When we zoom out, you can see it's starting to get bricked. So obviously, like, the mix is, is being pushed to its limits. So you have to be, like, really careful once you're doing this. If you know how to eat, if you're a master at EQing and mixing and processing and stuff, you can sometimes get away with just sending it all straight to the master. But if you need to make things easier, just use buses, you know, like I mentioned earlier, like Skrillex does, like he always, always has. And that's how you get it done. You know, it'll make things uh, more dynamic. You'll be, you won't have these uh, clipping issues or these bricking issues, I should say. You want to then analyze this so at this point it's it's like very cinematic it's almost like a movie right it was just really loud and grungy and like horror-esque it feels like i'm in uh like mark echoes getting up <laughs> ps2 game walking around the night of new york city trying to like spray paint graffiti on the wall that type of vibe And then all of a sudden... Ah! 
So we get teased with a little dubstep bass. It's like so cinematic. It's so movie. Like this is what you do in a movie. And then we get almost silent. And we like this dynamic shift once again is beautiful. So lots of good things in here, man. Lots of energy. Piece of art. Loving this. Just a little bit too loud. A little bit pushed. A little bit too much. So you just want to get that to negative three. And get it done. My boy. We want to turn this up. Like I wanted to turn it up super loud on my interface. But if I did, then I'd be really hurting my ears unfortunately i've blown my ears to the point where i i can tell what's too loud or what's not all these raves for freaking six eight years with no ear protection fucked me up so that's why you gotta wear those earplugs my guys when you go to those shows or else you're gonna be ringing for the rest of your life gonna be ringing now for the rest of your life gonna ring now who's next we got eek beaks with are you ready I am ready. Are you ready? Are you guys ready? Let's go ahead and see. Silence. Beaks, are you ready? And surely I was not ready for this. Okay, so there is definitely potential in what you got in your brain. I know it because I know you've got all these flows in your brain, right? Overall, though, you have to work on overall sound design so that your main bass leads don't sound like, like little blips of white noise. You know, there's a lot of repetition going on. Whenever you have something repetitive, 
repeating that much. You want to focus on movement, you know, kind of like how house does it, maybe movement with filters, movement with automation and different effects, just so that that constant static sound is everly, ever constantly changing. And that will be really important if you want to use like rhythms like that. One of the things is, is overall phrasing and control of the lows in your mix is really important too. So once we get into the drop, it almost sounds like two subs are playing at the same time in a couple different sections. And that worries me. So just please make sure that you're not playing two sub basses at the same time, which is a hundred Hertz or below. If you do, then they'll start phasing. It'll kind of start feeling like all bubbly and like they're bouncing on each other. It's just, it's not normal. And you have to be careful because like we want to be able to play this in the club with the sub or the festival with the sub or your car with the sub. And that sub needs to be just hitting ever so beautifully, which is what the sine wave does. You know, it's very, this is the most simple wave, the sine wave at the lowest frequency at octave zero. And that's the sub bass. So we just got to take delicate, delicate care of our subby. Let's check out the drop right here. So like at this point, there's a lot of other sounds it sounds like that have sub playing with it maybe, or even the mud frequency. So like 100 to 300 hertz around there. Those frequencies, if they build up, that'll sound like mud. It's just undesirable. So you want to be taking care of that frequency spectrum too. Now this is supposed to be the drop, right? Because it's building up to it. But when we hit this point, which is like the climax, it's really just a sub plane white noise impacts down. There's really no like lead. There's not any basses. There's nothing to really dance to. It's just sub. So we need something rhythmically to be changing, moving. We need something to be going back and forth to be dancing to. There's just like maybe a little bit of percussion. Right here is where it sounds like two subs are starting to play which is a very big thing you gotta be careful of. The sub sounds overpowering in the mix. It may be too loud. If you're clipping the sub too, like if the master is starting to look red and it's redlining, you gotta be careful not to do that either. Make sure there's a clipper on your master to uh, make sure that you're taking care of headphones, speakers that you're sending it to, your ears. And make sure the sub is turned down a little bit too, because when you test it with like a sub in the car or something, then you can see more that the sub would be too loud. So if you can, try to test it with the sub so you can see what's going on too. But the phrasing, lastly, four bar phrases is what you're going to work in. Call and response, that's going to help making these tracks a lot more danceable and have a lot more flow. So work on that. That's a. Uh, those are the, the tips. That's the tip from Drip. You hear? That's a tip from Drip. Oh, my mercy. Nemesis, ball till I fall. Nemesis has another track in here, but someone else is flipping his track. That's how you know it's getting down. That's how you know things are going down right now. Check out the cover art. Naturally, we have a um, very hippie hypnotic man jumping through the clouds, or maybe it's slurpy slush. and He's naturally making that slam dunk with a new galaxy sun in the background. So this is hypnotic. This is funky fresh. What can we do with the crouton flip? We're going to check it out right now. Crouton flip. Nemesis ball to laugh off crouton flip. Hit it. We're going to hit that. Oh, 
chat man who hurt this guy who hurt that crew tell me Of Crouton coming in with the Nemesis Ball to Lafal Crouton flip. That's what I like to feel. That's what I like to hear. We got some crazy rhythm function going on. We got some crazy rhythm basses, some crazy subs, lots going on. Lots to unpack. Honestly, the main bass lead, wrong, wrong, and the way you're slowing it down, speeding it up, that's a fun time. The overall tone of it and like the width of it, how it's feeling in the mix feels really nice. It's so, it's so wonky, man. But the thing that I think really takes it to the next level is you like sprinkling in, I think that's the original melody or maybe this is a different melody. Like, like all like reverbed out. It's just so gangster, man. It's just gangster. Uh, the mix could benefit with the lead being a little bit louder, you know? If you just added a multiband dynamics, for example, to the group and just pulled them up a little bit louder, maybe a little bit of saturation after that, that's all you would need to do. And that would have more energy, it'd get more pump in, and it would be as loud and then as full as that sub, which is just dominating the mix. Sub sounds regular in the back end here, but at these sections the sub is like it feels like it's being automated by a auto pan or a lfo and it's like wiggling up and down and the problem with that is we're losing intensity of the sub when it should be full and then it eventually gets full and intense but then we start losing it again so i would just really recommend like refraining from that and not making it so wiggly wuggly and making it more figly fugly so for figly fugly you basically stop the lfo have full control of your lfo don't have it just randomly move but rather full control with the lfo and serum manage your shape add silence to the end make it clean have multiple uh, subs like that at different rates if you need to and you can automate the serum knob if you need to as well lots of different options but that sub really important make sure you check on that in the first drop 
And then over on the back end, like it kind of sounds like you're just like freestyling rhythms and the phrases and there's not much cohesion going on here. It's kind of like you're just randomly spitting different rates and stuff. So I would try to have more organized phrases so that it feels like the phrases actually make sense when they're transitioning to each other rather than them just be totally just different phrases doing different things. Uh, when you look at it as a whole, it all should have cohesion and make sense and flow with one another. Uh, drum thickness too, like the kick is pretty small. Snare's pretty small. It's just not really matching the bases that are that it's trying to create a groove for. You know, those drums are really important. It creates the groove that what we're dancing to. So make sure sample choice, try different samples, things that add the most energy and claps too, like claps can have tails. The snare can be layered with the clap if you need to put it in the background, if you want the snare to be front and center, but really just get that thing thicker. And then sidechain, I don't know about the sidechain. You really want to work on the sidechain, get that sidechain more pumping so that it creates more groove. Not too sure if there is a sidechain here or not, but yep, check on that. That'll be a good time. Empty section of space. And then in these, it sounds like something's on mono. Like there's, it almost sounds like there's an empty section of space, either stereo or mono with the original vocal. So just check on the original vocal, make sure that you have a full uh, frequency spectrum, of course, but also stereo image at the beginning. Okay, up next we have Azul and Laser and Nightmare. Hmm? Nightmare. There's a guy named Nightmare already. He's pretty big. And like the, I guess it's hybrid trap, hybrid dubstep scene. Anyways, we got this tarot dubstep glitch song going on. Let's get it done. Let's see what they got. <laughs> Oh dang, who made that John? Whoa, <laughs> whoa. As DJ Khaled would say, cranberries or something. But I gotta say, man, there's a lot of energy in this. And if the sub wasn't so like 
overpowered in the mix it's taking over the mix it almost sounds like the sub is blown out it's creating a lot of mud it's competing with the other frequencies but man i mean there's a lot of sick sound design going on in here so much dope flow <laughs> like the overall like bounce and flow and there's dynamic shifts in here man if you got this mix on and clean dude we are in it for the win it be careful when you're clipping your subs and your guns together the sub is usually too loud we perceive low frequencies to be louder than they actually are i mean we perceive the low frequencies quieter than they actually are so we always turn up the lows thinking they're not loud enough but really we shouldn't be doing that so for example on my template in my Lowe's bus, I have it negative three on the utility to ensure that there's a fail safe at the end of my signal flow that's turning down the lows because I know I'm probably gonna be turning them up too loud because I love that bass. I'm loving that sub. You know what it is. I'm sure you guys have the same thing going on over there at your house, you know? But we have to get to the important business here. This tonality of this bass in here is very sick and like i said earlier the sound design is just is really on point like if i heard that sound in the club or the festival it would just make me it's automatic bass face mixed with the sub but once again whole mix is sounding crowded muffled we can't really hear or feel the intensity of your main bass leads because of these issues so I would work on them. Once again, use the bussing if you need to. Do the, the tips that Skrillex does. He is the master. If you need clean, do audio engineering tricks. Try not to send all of your tracks directly to the master because things get crowded. Things need space. Things will be all squished up. You don't want to be all squished. No need for the squish. I'm actually got snasted. Ooh, we got snasted. With Cthulhu. Oh, Lord have mercy. It's a great name. Last submission he submitted was fucking... I think it was like super good. I think it was my favorite. I think I saved it for the one time. I think I saved it for the one time. Where was it? It's on here. Yeah. Um. Anyways, guys. Unfortunately, we don't have a cool cover art. Right here, Snasta, maybe maybe add a cool cover of Cthulhu next time. That'd be nice and cool. But let's check it. Nice. Pray to the gods. Hearts in the chat. Real hearts only, no fake ones. Let's go. Nesta coming in super hot. Super hot with the Cthulhu. Oh my lord, have mercy. What is going on? Well, uh, so I gotta say, you have very unique flow. I can kind of tell that 
you have a different brain than most and it's going to take you far because flows like this are what people are craving you know i remember i would listen to alien park all the time i'm like yo why isn't this guy in festivals yet you know like these flows and these grooves like it's so so much dance and that's kind of the same way i'm feeling you know but the only thing is it's not sounding as professional as like when i first heard alien park so you have to make sure every single song sounds super high-end professional top a5 wagyu beef gold status high quality frequencies now how do we achieve this mixing and mastering there's reasons that there's mixing and mastering engineers that get paid lots and lots of money just to mix and master the song but i'm telling you this ain't 1992 we are in the time where we can do it ourselves and when i went to audio engineering school or if you need to go to audio engineering school to learn these things you can do that but that's like a lot of money and all the information is online for free so utilize it look up audio engineering knowledge mixing and mastering knowledge from the actual audio engineers see how they bust signals see how they eq how volume reverb space all comes into play when getting that perfect clear mix right now everything is super clean except for like the main bass leads when it comes to like overall loudness clarity the hat in the song is a perfect thing to compare your main bass lead with because the hat has all the frequencies playing at perfect loudness it's so clear but then if you could try to compare the high frequencies to the main bass lead you can see there's like a difference there's a discrepancy there and it almost sounds more muffled like the high frequencies are gone almost like a filter is on it or something <laughs> now overall flow sound design sub just so many things are so good in this so please don't get me wrong this is some super hot fire but we have to go to the next level so that when we present this to the labels or any artist that has perfect ears like my ears are starting to get tuned to the point where all these touring artists have their ears tuned where they've just been making music for years as musicians and as djing and then you just can know what frequencies sound good what frequencies sound bad how things can be improved in the mix so work on those things use reference tracks if you need to to kind of compare your bass leads to your favorite songs bass leads or whatever and use compression multiband dynamics specifically don't use ott unless you're like sound designing maybe a growl from scratch otherwise Go simple, go minimal, use just the regular multiband dynamics. It's the cleanest compressor like ever. It's so easy, just throw it on. And then add a saturator after it. If you need a little bit more loudness, add a little bit of saturation after the compression. And it's just like a hack for quick, easy loudness. Control your wet and dry, control the mix, and you'll be good to go. Balance that, balance that shit in there, man. Good job, Snesta. As always, you're gonna be killing it, man. You're gonna be killing it all. Oh, we got Siege. Man, I met Siege at Lost Lands in the crowd, man. I don't know how he found me. It must have been fate. That crowd was mega. But Siege done found me. We're gonna have give Siege a little round of applause for finding me in Lost Lands. Nice, let's go. I Someone order me some Instacart.
rolling up. Uh, I'm about to crack your jaw, boy. Let's do it. One, two, three hundred crack your jaw. Let's do it. Crack Yo Motherfucking Jaw by Siege. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just Crack Yo Jaw by Siege. But maybe, maybe I want to rename it, maybe. Nah, we don't rename. Maybe we didn't rename. Okay. Motherf- motherf- equal sign Jaw. All right, man. Pff, lots of energies in here. First off the rip, though. We're entered into, it almost sounds like bees buzzing. Let's check out a bee buzzing, hold up. Sounds like bees buzzing almost. It almost sounds like a sample has been super stretched. You know it when it sounds super stretched in Ableton? I'd be careful, Siege. That doesn't sound too pleasant to the eardrums right off the rip. But as soon as we enter this, you start adding more sounds. You start getting more groove. It starts sounding a little bit better. Obviously, the bees are just stinging in the background. So maybe EQ out the bees, maybe fix the bees, you know what I'm saying? These subs, when they come in, they're a little bit too loud, so they just like overpower everything. Everything gets a little bit muddy when the sub comes in. Like that's, that's mud, man. You gotta be careful. So one note that I put here is it gets about negative one luff on some of these sussy sections. So some of these sections in the drop get too loud, way too loud. Maintain everything. Don't let anything get past negative three. Just keep measuring, keep adjusting the mix and fixing that. Sustains overall are a little bit too loud in here. The first sustains pretty good, but it sounds pretty dry as well. Like there's not enough processing. There should be a hint of reverb on there, a little bit of compression and distortion to make it fit in the mix and make it sound like it lives with the other bases around it. Otherwise, it kind of sounds dry and like by itself and you never really want that then you switch to a different tone i don't know if you frequency shifted or something but you might as well just use your piano roll and shift to a note that's perfectly in scale the frequency matters the hertz matter the note matters you want to pick the one that is best uh, to transition from the first note, which should be the root note. And then one of the things that made me really sad, um, oh, but I want to let you know, this made me really happy. First drop, super, super happy with this. Well, not these subs, though. You know what I'm saying? Fix those subs. Like the transition, uh, it's just so much energy, so heavy. The vocal is so sick. Like this is ultimate rage, you know? This is just beautiful dance party. 
I'm expecting perfect timing like this in the second drop, but unfortunately you don't deliver on that because you have a lot going on here and eventually the drop should be hitting and you keep faking it out. So let's see if I can find out where it should drop. <laughs> So if you wanted to do a fake out, you would start the fake out maybe a little bit earlier because this transition flow really makes it so that the drop is right here. Like we are just expecting the drop to be here, but then you just fake us out. And on top of that, this fake out doesn't have any space to it. Like there should be a washout that's like huge. So it feels like it's in this huge space, like an arena. And then like the timing here is just off. So we get the drop way late. By the time we get the drop, the energy levels have decreased significantly. And it's just a whole different vibe and energy from the first drop. So please fix the timing of that second drop. Listen in full context from the beginning of your buildup to the end so that you don't get confused when you're working in such a small amount of space or time. But yeah, man, good job. Cracker jaw, good piece of art. I'm loving those jaw cracks. Don't get your jaw cracked up in that mosh pit, boys. That's not a fun time. Only crack jaws when you got some enemies. Call them jaw crack enemies. Sack attacks next. If I had eaten soap, I don't eat it because I didn't know I didn't heart. <laughs> Wait, what? Hold up. Check out this cover art, though. That girl's thick, though. Damn that robot thick. I didn't even know AI busted out things like that, man. Shh. I know what I'm about to do later. But put me some robotic AI thickness. Anyways, let's go ahead and look at this title and try to uh, unpack this. If I eat it soap, I don't eat it. Because I did know I didn't heart. Doesn't look like much sense is made in the title here, but we are going to run this track up, down, left, and right. Let's get it done. I don't wanna fall in love. I just wanna have some fun, yeah. I don't wanna fall in love. I just wanna have some fun. I don't wanna fall in love. some hyper trap going on here we got if i eat it sub i don't eat it because i don't i don't eat heart i don't know if that's the best track the best track name for this you know because uh, i don't want to fall in love maybe that maybe f f love maybe fall in love maybe i don't want to fall in love maybe something on that would be a little bit cool let's check out the beginning intra instrument chord i don't want to fall in love i just want to have some fun yeah I don't want to fall in love. Vibe. I just want to have some fun. I don't want to fall in love. I don't want to fall in love. 
Now, the way this transitions from this vibe from the luscious chords to like this more hybrid trap beat needs to be transitioned better because right now this is like still almost full volume transitioning to this so if we were to keep it at full volume then this rest of the section would need to include some of these chords in it but it really doesn't so you have to work really uh, masterfully at transitioning these energies and vibes into this new energy and vibe especially if you're not using build-up drums so just keep that in mind the sub during the build-up the sub and the build-up needs to be following either the brass in the background or like the kicks in a fashion but right now the sub is like constantly changing in a time where we should be building tension So work on the sub, the lows, make sure it gets really pumping, add as much energy as possible during this buildup. Layer as much claps, snares, risers, and sweeps as you can to build as much energy, and then you can just dial back down if it starts to get too crazy. And then during these pre-drop sections, maybe have some sweeps up into the drop, maybe some impacts down as soon as it happens different cool little sounds and maybe turning this up a little bit too would be beneficial now these calls so this whole section is really fast so if you go to a call that's fast after it just doesn't make sense the call is supposed to be like a slow section and then it gets fast so you go back and forth between the slow and the fast so like this is slow like dun, 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 dun. and then go super fast but then you kind of bring back a little bit of super fast in the call so just be careful doing that now overall we're going to start to analyze the frequency spectrum and what's actually being played with this bass lead, so it's like the bubby. Now, the overall web could be turned up a little bit. It could also benefit by having a layer that's even more focused on the mid range grunge. And then this other bass, this main web that we're using, can be more focused on the high frequencies. And then you can EQ them accordingly to that. And then, of course, the sub would be controlling the lows. So we could just have a nice, good layer of lows mids highs and then we use multiband dynamics to then turn up lows and mids and i'm sorry mids and highs and make it sound nice and clean that is about it this is a good idea of nice hybrid trap nice vibes at the beginning that's the stuff we need man that's the stuff we need to proceed hmm very cool next we have tez <laughs> tez with i'll take any criticism <laughs> any criti criticism thanks he has a picture with his friends they might be at a party they might be at a rave we don't know we didn't take the picture but let's go ahead and check out the song <laughs>
Okay. That's all take any criticism by Taz. It's not Tasmanian Devil. It's just regular Taz. So just clarifying. Uh, you guys might wanted to know that. But anyways, we have a pretty long intro. And there's not really any substance in this intro, you know? It's just like one sound being repeated. It's like repetition is a thing. If we can predict what's going to happen before it actually happens, that's not actually a good thing because we want to be surprised. Music is supposed to take us on a journey. It's important. So practicing overall composition, song arrangement, you know, chord progressions, melodies, and different like drum beats and rhythms will help a lot with your intros because right now this is just very very skippable and you don't want it to be skippable that's the last thing you want when we get to the drop there's a lack of like sub bass and a lack of sub sub bass on the down beats specifically so downbeat is as soon as a kick hits that's our first downbeat and as soon as this hits there should be like a big impact it should like set it off but really just kind of just throw us into the main bases, like the main response bases. There's not really any flow going on here. So you want to use call and response to then get better flow. So as soon as that first downbeat hits, something crazy happens on the impact. And then boom, you hit us with the response base. And then we're going back and forth. We have like stuff to dance to. That's what we need. Lots of movement. Movement is everything. The call and response when it gets fast. <laughs> This stuff starts to get really repetitive, so this is an even more dire need of call and response in these sections. The overall track is very quiet, too. Something like this genre should not be negative seven luffs. It's very quiet, which means the overall energy of the song will be impacted. It'll be low energy because it's not high volume. So remember that compression and saturation is how you're going to get things louder. Lastly, the timing over here. Starts to get really messy, man. You can't just randomly pick timings in the beat grid. You kind of want to be structured. Use your downbeats, which are, so look right here, 57 to 58. That's what I'm looking at. The downbeats are 57 and 53. Offbeats are the point twos and the point fours. So like in house, when it's four to the floor, you have a kick on every beat. One, two, three, four. And your hats are on the offbeats. Poots, poots, poots. But in dubstep, it's the kick on the downbeat and the snare on the point three. So remember, your point three is like the most important time. Any point three in your song is a snare. So just remember that. Like when your drop starts, the first section should be your call. So like a unique bass plays from 57 to 57.3. The snare hits, our first headbang activates, and then your main response bass continues. And that's just the most simple call and response technique there's millions of others that you can try and experiment with but you have to find ways to make movement flow within the track getting it done okay 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 oh dang looks like we have a sound design session activated by tang looks like we got 4.9 we don't have four we don't have 4.7 we got 4.9 so we're gonna see what's up we're gonna run it in and you'll see what Tang has for the win.
Okay, we got Tang coming in hot with the sound design session full point. Now we get thrown into some subbies. Very clean subby. That's one thing, Tang, you got down every single time. The cleanest, Vaughn cleaniest of the subs. Let's check this. Some of these subs, though, you can tell, like, only the sub is playing. There's a clap, but just sub. So what worries me is like if I was listening with my iPhone or MacBook Pro speakers or something, a lot of the sub may not come through as much and it may sound empty. It already sounds empty right now with the headphones. But if I couldn't feel the sub, then it would sound even more empty. But I can, you know, still feel it. I would recommend you start like layering these subs with other bases. The overall flow of the track is pretty minimal movement, you know. Like, there's, if you're making it 140 beats per minute, it can be real easy to accidentally create a song where we're dancing in half the time, which is like 70. And that's basically what's going on here. This is the dance speed. This is how fast you dance to this song. One, like this. But we, we should be dancing like this. Like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So like that's the difference and check it. So whatever BPM you're actually producing in, what we're perceiving the dance to be is half the time. This is actually effective in different genres, like those wookie crazy genres where we're kind of like time warping and time shifting and making people go through these crazy psychedelic experiences with frequencies with using both double time and half time at the same time. But we're not essentially doing that here. So you want to just take those things into consideration when, you know, building something like this. Uh, you usually have things going like the double the time. So if you were to add or incorporate other sections where it's a little bit faster, then you can go back and forth between the super fast and the slow, and then that would increase the speed and overall movement too. Cool. Overall sound design. Sound design is cool. Um, it sounded a little bit pots and pansy. I remember I used to have a really good friend and I would be playing all this trap, hybrid trap music or big room shit back when I first started DJing. And he would be so mad because all the songs I loved sounded pots and pansy. And I would never understand what he meant, but there are certain tones and stuff that comes from pots and pans. And when we're creating dubstep basses, we can get, get those tones a lot. I mean, for God's sakes, our snare, the tear out pan snare is a like a pan tone, you know? So... Uh, the tone is really good. Some people don't like the tone. I suggest using, or just like, when you're using the tone, don't overdo the tone. So like the whole drop, for example, is using that pots and pansy tone. But maybe if you switched it between other like growly tones or different types of frequencies, then it'd be easier for people's ears. But overall, man, this is cool. Nice sesh. Sound design session 4.9 has been finished. You're moving on to maybe 4.10 or 5. I don't know how you number those things. Who knows? I don't know yet. But next, we got Angler. Distorted Murders. VIP. Let's get this done. Whoa, hold up. Did we just get a little sneak peek? Not on my watch. Check out the cover art. Oh, heavens. Oh. 
And the Sam Van Heusen. Whoa. Hey, yo, DJ. Yo, how much it cost? Yo, how much it cost to run that shit back? Oh, shit. You got me feeling so crazy. Words can't really explain how I was feeling. I was like, took it into his own, like a dubstep manhunt zone. You know, Manhunt PS2 by Rockstar Games? Manhunt 2, you know? You're like in that zone, feeling all this like dark energy. But then we get hit with something very almost erratic yet organized rhythmic changes just constantly happening in all these different phrases and it gets pretty crazy but it doesn't get out of control it's it's impressive overall track is kind of quiet at negative seven lefts it could definitely be a little bit louder and once you get it louder it'll probably start to sound a little bit muddy because we're getting real close to that. The only reason why it doesn't sound too muddy is because of how quiet it is. But I mean, that's kind of the goal of dubstep. And that's the hardest part of dubstep is getting your quiet, good sounding song to sound clean and nice while it's also loud at the same time. Compression and saturation can bring up and pull out those problem frequencies like mud frequencies or harsh frequencies. So use EQ a lot everywhere in all tracks all groups all buses to clean things and make things fit with each other you also use stereo imaging you know mono stereo left and right panning to then put things in different parts of the space so that they can live together cohesion right now this is sounding good but a lot of problems will arise once you start to get it louder which isn't it really needs if you play this song to like another finished rhythm song it'd be a lot quieter and a lot less energetic so check those things you have really dope sound design really good flow in here you got me doing a bass phase for like two minutes straight i think man that's a it's hard to do drums are tight clean crisp It's like music can either make you dance, right? Or make you feel. A lot of the dubstep we make can either be like super head bangy, high energy, or it could be the psychedelic wook, wookie trance, trippy sound that people do drugs to, you know? And that's, that's kind of what shit we're living in and Bro, I don't know, man. This is the type of stuff that you be looking looking for during those Wook vibes. So, I like it. Good job. Very nice. Very nice. Exterminate. Hmm. Interesting. By Rage. Work in progress. Exterminate. Check out the cover art. We are in the jungle. Where is the dinos? We shall see.
Give it up for AI. Give it up for AI. Run that shit back real quick. That's nice. Man, that's a lot of energy. That's a whole lot of energy. I must say, I really love Tear Out. I really love how you're able to incorporate such different fills. There's one fill in here that's like, it feels like it, you ripped it from an old song or something. Yeah. <laughs> that like these are so sick they need to be turned up though like it's super loud we want these to be as as loud as you know what we're hearing it sounds super quiet so turn those up make sure those are good overall like it, it the guns have a lot going on right so there's a lot of harsh frequencies starting to build it's starting to sound a little bit noisy like white noisy try to dial that back so that those main mid-range grungy uh, guns sit well in the mix. Also, one main thing too is like the sub is so dang quiet in this section, and you definitely don't do that the same here. You like clip your sub with your bases. You can tell. Let's listen to the difference in sub from drop one to two. Also, the sub is just sustained, it feels like. It's not even moving in rhythm to the guns, which needs to be happening as well. So this sub, compared to this sub, it's a big difference, man. This shit is heavy over here, man. I am heavy. I'm loving this. Let's run that back one more time. Ah. Fuck, bro. Come on, man. Like, d Jesus. Good job. Give it up for the one more time. Very fun, very fun, very fun time. Gosh, dude, that's Exterminate by Rage. Rage, good job. Please, more of like the second drop vibes. We want that harsh, clipping, distorted sound with the sub and the basses. That's what we're going for, man. That shit sound fire. That's a fun time, man. Whew. Flip the clip by Dreams is up next. Let's check out this cover out real quick. It looks like we got a dream breaker. Oh, dang. There's always so much meaning, dreams. You always have so much meaning. He's dripping in dreams. Dream bigger. The feathers. Horns. It's, it's evil, man. What are we walking into? Let's go. Boy, got bands up on me down to this bitch. I can never change my ways down. 
bands up all That's it to the pits And my life's just how I live With a flip the clip Matter of fact, you just flip the script Writing, fact Yeah, I'm gonna go and flip the dip Uh, she acting cool But I'm acting too fast Uh, quick Matter of fact Look at that kick and dash Wanna sit to go fast Don't quit it, don't black Flip the clip. We got some trap shit going on. We got some of that vibes. <laughs> okay. I mean, obviously, you see, I'll be rapping in the drop because it sounds empty without vocals in the drop. Undoubtedly, it's just a beat, you know. This isn't really electronic dance music. It's not a hybrid trap drop. It's just a beat. And on top of that, the vocals at the beginning are not in time with the actual melody or the beat going on. So it's it needs to be worked on so that these vocals sound perfect in time with what's going on here. The melody has a long delay. It's taking up the mix. It's affecting the timing of the song. So you may need to uh, take control of the melody's tail, the reverb and delay on the melody so that it could be tight and make sure that you warp your vocals properly so that it can actually flow with everything. Now this section is, is, you know, pretty clean. There's not a lot of groove or bounce in this though. I mean, you have a lot to work with with your drums and stuff to add groove and bounce, but they're just very sustained subs, very basic beat. So the energy is, is lacking here. It's very low. You would need a very good vocalist to rap fast, change up rhythms and flow to make to, to kill a beat like this, basically. So yeah, it's okay. It's very easy to make something like this. So I need you to definitely step up the game, add more energy. And if you're going to submit a beat, you need vocals to be on the beat for sure. Oh, show. Gotta get those vocals in there for show. Sorry, man. Most songs we get are like EDM, so... Anything that's not EDM is, you know, a lot lower energy, a lot lower quality in production. It's a lot easier. You can, it only takes like six tracks to make a beat, <laughs> but we do like a hundred, 150 tracks sometimes to make these and compose these uh, big EDM songs. Rhythm songs maybe will be minimal, 30, 40 tracks or something. Maybe you can get away with 20 tracks, but you risk repetition. Repetition is not a good thing. Up next and final submission, we have Revenant with Slow Mo Collab ID. Let's get it done. <laughs> Oh, 
Fuck yeah, dude. We got lots of energy in here. The overall clarity, cleanliness of this mix is really nice. Let's check out this drop again. <laughs> The dynamic shift, so it gets like silence here. We have just a growl, the sustain stops. Those make a huge difference in the overall energy of the track, so it's really nice to see this. Yeah, overall, the track definitely is loud enough, it's wide enough, the mix sounds good, there's a lot of energy, but unfortunately, there's one big problem, and that is overall, like, creativity and originality. Unfortunately, like, there's a specific type of dubstep that sounds exactly like uh, Lays and Resurrect, you know? It's, it's, it's almost crazy because like all of the Lays and Resurrect sounds sound, you know, the same. And then now there's a lot of artists that are starting to sound like that. And I know for a fact that this sound doesn't have a shelf life that's that long because this sound is very basic. You know, there's just sustains, your growls, your switch ups, and there should be something new and different that you're incorporating, that you're bringing to the table so that you can stand out from all these people. I have many different submissions. Like I'm, I'm just a small channel and I have a lot of submissions from people making the sound, replicating their sound. And, you know, I, I'm just saying, like, if you want to take it to the next level, you definitely want to switch it up and not sound like, you know, another artist. You want to sound unique. You want to make new sounds and you want to have other people copy you. Once people start copying you, then you're going to be touring and you're going to be at the festivals and you're going to be dominating that sound and you'll have a big enough audience to just conquer the world. But overall, that's a really good song, man. I wasn't expecting the drop to be that heavy or that clean. So very good job. Keep it up. Just work on some new grooves, new rhythms, man. You're going to get it done. You guys are sick. Thank you for coming and joining the audio issues are finally fixed. Life's good. You guys, submit your tracks for next week. I will see you in these new videos that are coming this week. Lots of new things. Uh, hybrid trap stuff, a dubstep stuff, fun, random stuff. So stay tuned. Join in. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and go to dripman.com for everything you need. Book a lesson, sample packs. Have a good day, guys. Peace out. A-Town. Uh, Danny. Danny. Nature, do you